to the Township of Howells Planning Board meeting for Thursday, November 7th, 2024. Eileen, opening statement, please. I hereby declare this meeting of the Howell Township Planning Board to be open, adequate notice having been given, pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act in the following manner. First, on January 5th, 2024, a copy of said notice was emailed to the Asbury Park Press and the Star Ledger. Second, on January 5th, 2024, a copy of said notice was hand delivered to the clerk of the Township of Howell. Third, on January 5th, 2024, said notice was posted in the office of the planning board and on the bulletin board in the Howell Township Municipal Building, 4567 Route 9, Howell Township, New Jersey. In accordance with the Fire Prevention Code and your safety, please be advised that this facility is designed with two emergency exits which are at the front and rear of the meeting room. Furthermore, smoking is not permitted in the municipal building. Please take note that this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Township TV 77. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Cristiano? Present. Mr. Greenfield is excused. Mr. Leggio? Here. Mr. Mercer? Here. Mr. Tannenhaus? I have not heard from. Mr. Withers, I have not heard from. Mr. Rebell is excused. Councilwoman Fisher? Here. Ms. Pike has resigned her position on the planning board, so she is not going to be here this evening. Mr. Carbonic, I have not heard from. And Chairman Husser? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, at this time, would everybody please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence for our men and women fighting here and abroad. Okay, next, approval of minutes for the regular meeting dated April 10th, 2024. Eligible vo voters, Mr. Cristiano, Mr. Leggio, Mr. Mercer, and myself. Do I have a motion? I'll second. Mr. Leggio and Mr. Cristiano for the second. Mr. Cristiano? Yes. Mr. Leggio? Yes. Mr. Mercer? Yes. And Chairman Husser? Yes. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Eileen, any correspondence? I do have correspondence. I have an email from Michael Herbert. He's the attorney for SD3013 Basador LLC. Uh, they were not ready for this evening for that application, so he asked that this be adjourned until December 19th, and he granted an extension of time through December 31st, 2024. Okay. So that needs okay. to so Let me just make the uh, formal announcement. Uh, case number SD-3013, Besidar LLC, uh, will be carried to the board's December 19, 2024 meeting. It's a live meeting beginning 7 o'clock here in the main meeting room at Town Hall. There will be no further notice to property owners. I also have a letter from John Jackson. He's the attorney for case number SP-1123, SMC Properties, LLC which is on tonight's agenda, and he has asked that that also be carried to December 19th with no new notice and granted an extension of time for the board through that evening. In case number SP-1123, SMC Properties, LLC, where we'll carry that hearing to the December 19th, 2024 meeting as a live meeting here in Town Hall in the main meeting room beginning at 7 o'clock. There'll be no further notice to property owners. Great. That's all Thank you. All right. Thanks, Eileen. Thanks, Ron. Um, okay. Resolutions. Uh, actually, before we get into resolutions, do we, we this is the only meeting for November because of the league, right? Correct. Our and next then, meeting's December 5th. So we have two in December? Yes. December Got it. 5th and 19th. Okay. Cool. Thanks. All right, resolutions for case number SP-1055-1228 Realty LLC. It's a resolution granting extension of time on minor site plan approval. Eligible voters, Mr. Cristiano, Mr. Leggio, Mr. Mercer, and myself. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion for extension. 
Uh, it's a motion to memorialize. Okay. I'll second. Mr. Mercer and Mr. Cristiano. Mr. Cristiano? Yes. Mr. Leggio? Yes. Mr. Mercer? Yes. Chairman Husser? Yes. Motion carries resolutions memorialized. Okay, this is resolution for case number SD2998F for Wadsworth Development LLC, a resolution granting final major subdivision approval. Eligible voters, Mr. Cristiano, Mr. Leggio, Mr. Mercer, Councilwoman Fisher, and myself. Do I have a motion? Motion. Mr. Mercer, or Mr. Leggio, excuse I'll me. Second. And Mr. Cristiano? Mr. Cristiano? Yes. Mr. Leggio? Yes. Mr. Mercer? Yes. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. And Chairman Husser? Yes. Motion carries. Resolutions memorialized. Okay, the next resolution is for case number SD3015, Averholm Weinman. Mr. Chairman? Oh, yes. We received a letter late this, or this afternoon from the applicant's attorney. They had some comments on the resolution. So because it came this afternoon, I haven't really had an opportunity to speak with the applicant's attorney. So we're going to carry that resolution. Understood. Okay. Thanks, Ron. Mm -hmm. And case last one is case number SP1105 AAV RHW Property LLC, a resolution denying preliminary and final site plan with design weavers. Eligible voters, Mr. Leggio, Mr. Mercer, and myself. Do I have a motion? Second. Thank you. Mr. Leggio? Yes. Mr. Mercer? Yes. Chairman Husser? Yes. Motion carries. Resolutions memorialized. Thank you. Uh, Eileen, any submission waivers? No submission waivers. Okay. Before we get into the application, um, I would like to congratulate our member, Mr. John Leggio, as mayor-elect for Howell Township. So, thank you, John. Congratulations. And, okay. Let's get into it. Only application for this evening, case number SP1127, Diversified Acquisitions, LLC. This is for preliminary and final major site plan with ancillary variance and design waiver relief. Councillor, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. My name is Matthew Posada. I'm with the law firm Sills, Cummins & Gross, and I represent the applicant, Diversified Acquisitions, in connection with this application for preliminary and final site plan approval including potential bulk variances and or waivers or any other relief this board would seek for tonight. Great. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Dive right in. Dive right in. Fantastic. The applicant is here tonight, like I said before, for a preliminary final site plan application. What the applicant is here looking to do is they're looking to propose two flex space buildings that would be approximately in total 81,223 square feet. The proposed flex spaces for both buildings are going to be proposed as multi-tenant and they're being designed on spec. We don't really know exactly who's going to go in there, so therefore we're more generic. Think of it like that. <clears throat> as I'm sure this board is all well too aware of, you know, this township has contemplated and also entertained and gone through the ins and outs of re-examination multiple times since 2019. And it is because of those re-examinations, the applicant is here tonight proposing a permitted flex space improvement which will include all of those recently approved and heightened conditional uses and meeting their standards as well. Real quick, those conditional uses that we'll be seeking the permission of this board to do, and obviously, obviously showing the testimony in the record that we comply with all standards, will include contractor businesses, warehousing, and distribution, where such use requirements were heightened in 2022, pursuant to Ordinance 22-39, and we'll demonstrate how we have adequately satisfied all those conditions. And real quick, just keeping with that definition itself, I just want to read it for everyone, just to catch up to speed again, although I'm sure you guys are all too familiar. Uh, flex space is now defined as a building or parts of a building suitable for or capable of being, a co of being able to be changed to accommodate a variety of permitted uses and designed to be used on a short or long-term basis. A maximum of 20% of any tenant space can be office. Now, here's the extra language that was added intentionally in 2000. 22-39 ordinance back in 2022, which includes flex space includes those businesses listed under the trade contractor business use, such as plumbers, electricians, and other trade occupations. And if we were to continue with this application, the board seems to be following favorably for this application, we will most certainly seek guidance from this board as to what other trade businesses do you believe fits into that definition, since it's essentially kind of like an umbrella, if you will. So we do definitely seek uh, guidance from this board at a later date or later time. Uh, thus, pursuant to the code, flex space itself 
may be a combination, as we interpret it, of conditional uses, provided all the standards are met, as well as those permitted uses, such as uh, self-storage or office. Um, the conditional use permits, again, that we're looking to seek tonight are trade contractor business, warehouse space, and distribution space. Um, tonight, I am going to have two fact witnesses and one expert testimony for tonight. Okay, the expert testimony will be our engineer. Uh, however, our planner, our traffic engineer, and those architecture will be saved for another date. So, if I may, I'd like to introduce uh, our first fact witness, which will be uh, Nick Manoya. You swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide this board is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Please state and spell your name for the record. Uh, Nick Manoya, M I N O I A. Nick, can you please explain to this board? You can sit, and that in. is a microphone if you could make sure you speak into it so we can get you on the record. Sure. Thank you. Nick, if you can, can you please advise this board of what your position is with Diversity Acquisitions and your familiarity with this proposed project? Sure, thank you. So my purpose tonight is uh, largely, first of all, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, mayor, and uh, professionals and staff. Um, as the principal, I'm the founding uh, partner for Diversified Properties, which is the parent company of Diversified Acquisitions. So I am the sole owner of the company and founded a uh, company about 25 years ago. Um, so, generally speaking, have overseen the entire application process and uh, very excited to have been able to uh, go to contract with the Saker family and present our application here this evening. Perfect. Um, do you want to swear him in? Is that I did. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. All right, great. Why don't you walk us through what the uh, use and operations will be for the site? Sure. So, so a little uh, background first on our company as far as the type of properties that uh, we develop and own. We self-perform our uh, developments from a construction standpoint. It's a fully integrated company mm -hmm. where we do our own construction, we do our lease up, and we do our own property management. So it's more or less soup to nuts. Uh, our company is uh, based in Morris County, Montville, uh, about uh, two hours. It depends. Uh, tonight it was about two and a half hours from here. <laughs> um, a lot of traffic this evening. Um, our company is largely a multifamily, uh, flex industrial, self-storage, retail, and some office. We have uh, several hundred thousand feet of similar flex space. In fact, we have about 110,000 square feet of it under construction in Morris County right now, which is a larger site than what this one is, and it's, a, it's comprised of three buildings. And the type of uses there, uh, they really run the gamut from uh, trade contractors to light manufacturing, assembly, uh, some storage, um, and basically incubator type space for local companies, local businesses. And the contemplated uses you have for this site here that's before the board tonight is the trade contractor business, the warehousing, as well as the distribution, we really, the office space. We really see a, a, a big demand for that. Uh, pretty much every municipality where, you know, so, some of the trade contractors have been pushed out of the ability to lease small type space. Uh, these buildings uh, we think are ideally suited for those type of uses. Perfect. I have no further questions for this witness. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Terrific. If I may, I'd just like to bring up my next fact witness, who is his partner, uh, John Liefer. Did anybody have any questions? You swear or affirm the testimony about to provide this board is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Please state and spell your name for the record. Jonathan Liefer. Adjust that mic so you don't have to. Thank you, Eileen. <laughs> Jonathan Leifer, last name spelled L E I F E R. Perfect. John, why don't you uh, explain your position and role with Diversify, and then why don't you also walk us through the use and operations of this site, how you see it fit? Of course. Thank you, Matt. I'm Director of Acquisitions and Development for Diversified. I oversee all activities of the company pre construction. That would include positioning our acquisitions, positioning our land entitlements, generating strategy for presentation, and then programming our developments. I also happen to be the firm's in-house industrial professional, so I oversee all leasing, tenant negotiation, and deal closing matters. So Matt, you had asked about 
operations for the property. Nick described a little bit about our focus as a developer. We're active all over New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut. Nick is based up in Morris County himself, but I'm a Monmouth County resident, so I'm familiar with development patterns here in Monmouth County. We've tailored this project proposal to be suited to what we see as corporate citizen occupancy in the area. Generally speaking, here in Monmouth County, we're underserved for spaces for businesses to occupy that are underneath 40 or 50,000 feet at a time. As you can see on the site plan proposed before the board, we have two buildings here comprising approximately 80,000 square feet that are of a size and scale and intensity that are smaller than warehouse proposals at large format that have come before the board before. Our expert witnesses will detail more about traffic associated with the development, employment staff, etc. But we would expect our flex tenants and occupancy on site to be there between the hours of generally 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. each day in compliance with how noise ordinances not processing hazardous materials on site, so in compliance with that aspect of the township ordinance, and generally speaking, to be of a light industrial employment in nature. As you can see from the aerial presented, and as our uh, engineer will walk through, this development proposal is in keeping with the urban context of what's already in this area of Route 33 business. And as far as it goes for uses itself, there's going to be no outside storage, right? It's going to be a clean kept site, uh, but for maybe those delivery vans that might be parked overnight next to the docks. Is that correct? No outdoor storage is contemplated as part of the proposal. We have provided for several oversized parking spaces that would accommodate trade contractor fleet vehicles or employee parking vehicles that we normally drive. Uh, there may be overnight parking of vehicles in front of the docks shown in the truck court. All those vehicles, though, in keeping with house ordinance, would be emptied overnight. Terrific. I have no further questions for this witness. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Does Anybody have any questions? No? Great. All right, terrific. I'd like to go to my next witness, my only expert witness I have here for tonight. Uh, that'll be our engineer, Mr. Maltese. Oh, there you are. Hey, you swear or affirm the testimony about to provide this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state and spell your name for the record. Anthony Maltese, M-A-L-T-E-S-E. -E. Hey, counsel, if you could just qualify, Mr. Maltese. Absolutely. Mr. Maltese, can you please provide your educational background? what professional license you still hold, what license you hold that are in good standing, and just name three boards you've been qualified for in the past as an expert in engineering. Sure. Uh, I have a, a bachelor's in engineering degree uh, at Hofstra University. I have a bachelor's in surveying a degree at NJIT. Um, I'm licensed as an engineer in five states. I'm licensed as a professional and surveyor in uh, four states. I'm also a professional planner and a certified municipal engineer. I'm also the uh, borough um, the borough engineer for uh, Freehold, Borough Freehold. Um, I've appeared before Howell Township. I've appeared for, before Coltsnack. Um, we'll, we'll accept your credentials. Thank you. Great. Terrific. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Maltese, are you familiar with the HD4 zone? Yes. Uh, is the property located within that zone? Yes, it is. Are you also familiar with this municipality zoning code and master plan, including the recent reexaminations? Yes. Terrific. Uh, is your firm responsible for drafting these proposed site plans and doing the stormwater studies? Yes. Terrific. Why don't you walk us through what we're proposing here tonight? Sure. Um, if we could start with bringing up the existing conditions plan, which is sheet two of 17. The existing site is located at uh, the address of 940 Route 33 business. It's in zone HD4. 
the site is approximately 7.5 acres. It was subdivided off of a larger parcel uh, back in 2020. The site uh, existing conditions has several homes on it with a shared driveway. Um, there is bamboo to the rear, bamboo to uh, the, the westerly side. There, there is a residential house to the westerly side, and there's several residential homes uh, along the northern, northerly line. The site drains um, to the north, leading to Longbrook, which is a stream adjacent to um, two lots down to the right there. Oh, I forgot I have my pointer. There we go. All right, so current, the, the, the high point of the property is here. The current flow of, uh, of stormwater drains to these homes back here and leading to, to the brook that comes down this way here. Uh, it also comes down to the northerly end uh, side of the property leading to Route 33 and eventually making its way down the road uh, to, to drain into that uh, long brook. Just for confirmation, there are no existing stormwater improvements on this site? No, there are not. Thank you. You can, if you don't mind, turning to sheet three of 17, the site plan, the overall site plan. As Mr. Leifer said, uh, they are proposing two, two buildings. We have a building uh, here along the southerly southeasterly side of the property, which is approximately 48,854 square feet. We also have a building uh, in the southerly portion of the property, southwesterly portion, uh, 31,286, uh, with a total building area of 80,140 overall on the site. We have a 30-foot driveway coming in with a 30-foot aisle uh, running parallel to, the, to building number one with several parking stalls to the left fronting the building, and we also have uh, several parking stalls to the right, which, are, which we've enlarged to 25 foot in, in depth to accommodate for fleet parking. Um, we have loading backs, we have loading docks to the rear of this building, and coming around to the building number two, we also uh, maintain parking in the front and across the way, um, and that drive aisle is actually 25 feet, which we are requesting. A, that's one of the design waivers that we were requesting. To this Y intersection, uh, we have a turnaround access for larger vehicles uh, that the traffic engineer will discuss during his testimony. We have additional loading docks to the side of building number two. Um, if you can go to the next sheet, the grading plan, please. Actually, if you don't mind, could you go to the exhibit of um, the buffer aerial, please? That was quick. We put this uh, exhibit. We put this exhibit together to illustrate the requirements of a 50-foot buffer, residential buffer, from the current homes that are uh, adjacent to our lot. This. This area here represents 50 feet from this house uh, that, that is situated right here in this corner. It's 50 feet off the property line. Um, this buffer here is from across the street. It comes from because there's a residence, there's a house across the street, which is a mixed use. It's also a commercial property, but we did add that, that buffer. Along the northerly portion of the property, there's a, a few homes on this, pro, uh, on this lot, and we have a 50-foot residential buffer that's required along the entire stretch of, uh, of this side of the property. As you can see, this is the uh, Route 33 bypass that's uh, in the rear of our, our lot. Uh, this is one of the variances that we are requesting is a, um, a, a, a front yard setback on the bypass. Uh, the bypass is inaccessible. There are no driveways leading off of this bypass in, in our area. Um, 
Our property is situated approximately six to 10 feet above uh, the roadway, above um, the 33 bypass. At first, when we designed the plans, we didn't con we consider that a rear yard setback. We, we never considered a front yard. And after uh, the technical review and, and going back and forth, we we um, added this as a as a, a variance, the only variance on the on the project. Um, as you can see, this is all this is also all, all Sakers property here. Uh, I've recently sold, but these are. This is there's a lot of flex space in here. My office is actually located in this building. Um, the brook runs along here, these properties, and this is all residential back in this area. We have residential in this area. And to the left here is commercial, this property that goes off to the left. That's a landscape company and a, and a yard for all their equipment. And if you don't mind showing the other exhibit that has no aerial, just for a little clarity. A20. Okay. If you don't mind going to the grading and utility plan shown on sheet six of 17. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Um, I'm, I'm very rarely in that neck of the woods, but it, what, why isn't there a, a like an ingress egress to, uh, for the bypass? They made that bypass. I don't know how many years ago, but that bypass was had no intent of having any driveways located on it, and they had Route 33 business as that's where everything is off of. I mean, I, I don't think there's uh, any driveways along that bypass. Okay. And in addition, we're, uh, like I said, six to eight or ten feet above that in elevation. And we'll also have our traffic engineer further opine on that question. It's actually part of their testimony. This is limited access pursuant to the DOT. Where on 33 is this exactly at? The BNS, uh, it's uh, actually right across, uh, you know where the Wawa is on Howell Road and Five Points Road? So if you come out of Wawa and you make a left on Route 33, it's a, a couple, few properties down, maybe a quarter, yeah, quarter mile on the right. The park right there and all that. Yeah, as soon as you pass that business park, it's on the right-hand side, right, when you cross over the stream there. That's why you, got, you know where it is now? Yeah. The back of it is the... Yeah, I get it. Straight away from the other side of 33. There's no... You want to go on to. So... Um, this site is considered a major development under the stormwater uh, regulations uh, from the DEP. We implemented three infiltration basins on the pro project. We have one situated in the front. In the front, uh, we are not within. We are beyond the front yard setback. We originally designed this into the front yard, not realizing um, it was not allowed. So uh, we did not need a variance on that. Uh, we are within the setbacks. We also have a six-foot berm uh, that, that complies with the buffer requirements. We, on the right-hand side, we also have a six-foot high berm. And all these berms that I'm discussing here with you now, uh, we have a total of 863 trees that we're planting um, uh, within those berm, berm areas, those buffer areas. Uh, if you don't mind going to sheet seven, please, of 17. The second detention basin is located uh, across from building number two in the northerly corner of the property. And the third is a smaller scale infiltration basin located uh, to, the, to the, I say it's the back rear of the property. Um, and we have, a, we have a buffer, this 50 foot buffer, we have a berm that runs adjacent to the residential uh, property as well. So these stormwater improvements, they're expected to pick up the runoff, is that correct? Yes. And therefore, pick up the runoff, which would help alleviate the existing conditions today on those residential properties? Yes. Thank you. We have to meet reductions. Thank you. Um, there was, you want to talk about the technical yeah. requirements in the letters, if you want to ask me that? 
Just go through. Yeah. I've been here before the board before, and yeah. I was stopped from going through all the requ the letter. <laughs> so. If you have any questions, um, I'll continue on. Let me continue first. The utilities, um, currently, the, there is no public sewer in Route 33 business. It is in the works uh, to be extended to our property. So we are basing our design that we will be able to connect into public sewer in the near future. Um, we do not intend to have public water. There is a, pub, a pump tank a water tank here and a, and a pump house that will facilitate uh, um, water. I, I just, I'm going to chime in on that, Laura, about this, the sewer. Yes. What, I mean, what is the project, I mean, how, how do you do it with a projection that it's going to be there? Because we went through this whole issue with a, a, a proposed building with septic and on and on and on. The DEP has guidelines for land use classifications. That would be their basis for what they would do. Um, a couple of things that I want to nail down because I have to tell you, I heard operationally a couple things different than I expected today. So I, I thought this was a trade contractor yard, and now I'm hearing warehouse and distribution. And when I look at your plans, that's a conditional use as well, um, but you don't comply with the... Uh, I, I'm showing it on the screen, this additional 25-foot wide residential buffer. That, that was one of your comments and also uh, Mrs. Beam's comment, and we will be removing that note and that 25-foot additional buffer. But, but, my, but that's different than the operational testimony. You guys came in and told me trade contractor warehouse and distribution. Both warehouse and distribution require that additional buffer. So it was my understanding that this was coming back as a trade contractor business. And so I want to understand your use before we get too far because that's how I expected it to come in, and yet we opened with trade, contra, where, trade contractor warehouse and distribution. I'll have Mr. Leifer shed some light on that. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Laura, for the clarification. So we would like to address use in full when our planner can be available, but to answer your question head on, we don't anticipate that any use to be located in the flex buildings would be located in a place that does not meet conditional use standards. And other than that, we'd like to defer that question to our planner. Okay, you I say don't anticipate. Yeah. I don't anticipate that I'm going to have to put the dishes in the dishwasher tonight. So <laughs> maybe a full sink when I get home. You know? I mean, anticipate is not the same as you know, we will not. We will not. I, I can say okay. that on the record. That as a condition of approval and or restriction we could put on the site, that would simply say that the proposed improvements themselves for both buildings, if in fact it contemplates and therefore it is, has a tenant that does warehousing or distribution, all conditional use requirements would have to be satisfied, period. Well, but that's not. I guess it, it goes to what is it that you're asking us to approve? You know, so if, if you're asking us to approve those uses, then, you know, we'll look at that. But if you're saying those are not going to be uses, and if they are, we'll come back, that's, you know, that's fine. But if you're asking for permission for those uses, then, you know, we're going to have to get into that into, into some detail. And the other thing I think you guys are... In between terms, you, you keep saying flex space. Well, flex space is permitted, and while that could include trade contractor types, trade contractor is a conditional use. Correct. So I, I understand that you want to punt to your planner, but we sat, and, we sat and had a meeting because we felt that this was a jurisdictional issue. Quite frankly, I'm disappointed that we're not sure what, what we're proposing. So I, it was my understanding it was a trade contractor pursuant to the conditional use requirements of the ordinance. Yes, that is true in part, but also we're also contemplating for this site to also have warehousing and also distribution where those conditional use requirements would be satisfied specific to the improvement itself. For those so what I can tell used. you, Mr. Chairman, is this plan is not compliant yeah. because that additional 25-foot wide buffer would be in place. And while I know we could defer to our planner and Jen, since their planner is also not here, 
but I don't think it's fair that we could say we're going to restrict a portion of the building to not contain that use. It's not something, especially at a preliminary and a final. Agreed. There, there was just one more term that was used, Laura, um, and you know, your, your team as well. Uh, I think I heard light industrial. Is that, does that fall within the permitted uses uh, for, for flex? No. Light Industrial was an actual example he gave about the development he was working on in, uh, up North Jersey. That was one of the uses in those buildings. But light, so Light Industrial is not proposed. We are here. not proposing Light Industrial. Okay. So I guess to look at it kind of like an umbrella, if you will, right? We're proposing flex space for both buildings. Pursuant to flex space, we're allowed to have contractor businesses, we're allowed to have warehousing, and we're allowed to have distribution, provided we satisfy all conditional uses. So flex space trade contractor, warehousing, and distribution. And so what we're saying is that. So I think, though, from what Laura is saying is, um, just for purposes of us making sure that we have jurisdiction, um, if it's going to be a conditional use that, you're, that may occupy the mm -hmm. area, I think you need to show where that use would be and that it satisfies the conditions in that particular location. Can I just speak to my client for one second? Yeah. Have a moment just for my other we, we can take a brief recess. Okay. Yeah, we'll take a, a five minute recess. Thank you so much. The board will now take a five minute recess, be back at a quarter to eight. Board's professionals and also the sentiment of the board loud and clear. So, just for clarification purposes, tonight's application will be limited to just flex space with the conditional use being proposed of trade contractor business. Neither warehousing or distribution will be considered as part of this application for tonight or if this case gets adjourned for another hearing. However, with that being said, if we do get a tenant who says, hey, we also want to do distribution, we understand we have to come back to the town and shall we satisfy those conditional uses. Is that acceptable? That, that's fine, but just... Um, I just want to make sure that jurisdiction is not Laura, an issue. Laura, you said that the trade contractor was a conditional use also? That is correct. Yes. So then you would just need to show that yes, all you those comply proofs. with those conditions? Yes, understood. Okay. Absolutely. That sounds fine. Okay, thank you. That works. Okay, so as discussed, uh, the last we left off was the, um, the sanitary, the public, public sewer. We're looking to, to uh, hook into public sewer once that's available. And um, also we have an on-site water tank with a pump station, with a pump house. Uh, again, th th that was my problem, sorry. Yeah, yeah, we, we went into a different... Yeah, yeah. Different lane on that one, right? We were last. So, say if sewer doesn't come until 2027, 2028, you know, and you guys want to start developing, uh, what happens? We would be responsible. And then we would probably want to enter into an agreement with the municipality pursuant to the developer's agreement that any other uh, tenant, or not tenant, any other developer and or property owner that would use that sewer connection would have to pay their pro rata share for we, we that's, not, that, that's kind of not construction yeah. permit anyway well, without, that, the, without that no but that's not my question my question is right now you're proposing sanitary sewer right right sanitary sewer doesn't happen say it doesn't happen all right then you guys have to put a septic on that property right right we would have to redesign right right what what happens then ron laura i mean is I think that, they come back. They have to come back for everything, Yeah, because right? it's not a plan that was presented. So yeah. if they want to present a plan for a sanitary sewer, that's fine. And if they're confident it's going to happen within the time frame that they want, that's fine. But if not, then, I mean, they're going to have to come back to pick where it is, you know, the, uh, the sewer field on the property and provide the, uh, the details that the ordinance would require and make sure that it doesn't impact... Uh, any of the improvements that, that we have already approved. Got it. So you guys are banking on that sewer line. Yeah. We're banking on that sewer line, but in fact, if it doesn't come to fruition, we understand that we would have to come back to the board showing a amended site plan limited to just that utility line and how we could satisfy it. 
Got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, if you don't mind going back to the grading plan, please, uh, to sheet number six of 17. So currently we have all three detention basins um, discharging to the front of the site, uh, which is the northerly of the site going to uh, Route 33 business. And we will require, we will need to acquire a uh, stormwater discharge permit through the DEP um, because we're running the discharge uh, conveyance system down Route 33 westerly uh, to Longbrook. We will also need a, a DOT access permit um, and we will also need a DOT drainage um, permit. There was a quite, we, we were awaiting an environmental uh, or DEP presence absence. We, we received that recently and I think it was submitted. Um, other than that, there's no other uh, permitting we're waiting for or that we have to go for. The site is serviced by um, two trash enclosures as well. Three, actually three, I'm sorry. Two for, there's, there's two near buildings one and two at the Y intersection, sheet number five of 17. One here and one right here. And if you go to sheet number four, we have a third located right here. There's adequate parking. We don't, we don't uh, have a need for parking variants. And we satisfy all the other bulk requirements uh, on the project. We have no issues uh, at this time with any of the uh, technical review and um, Ms. Newman's re uh, engineering report or Ms. Beam's uh, planning report as it pertains to uh, engineering. So is your testimony tonight that we will comply? We will comply. Thank you. So Mr. Chairman, I have a couple follow-ups. So we had just asked that you testify about the LOI as to whether or not any wetlands or transition areas would at, in fact encumber your site? I didn't hear that. I know that you said you obtained it, but will they in fact? No, they will not. Okay. We, ha we actually have a, um, we currently have an LOI on the property as a whole in 2020. So it's still in effect after the subdivision happened. We don't have one, we didn't have, we, we went forward to get a presence absence just for our property but the wetlands are located all the way to the, um, near, the near the brook, uh, way far away from us. Okay, and parking will be handled by your traffic consultant? Yes. Yes. Sure. Uh, one of the waivers, and I'm not sure if the yeah. board wants to talk about it tonight, but is sidewalk along Route 33. Again, maybe you want to wait to hear from the traffic engineer, but that is also a waiver that is being sought. Um, and just, I just wanted to hear, so are you comfortable that the trash areas are adequately sized for the square footage that's proposed and the number of tenants you could potentially have? Uh, that's an applicant question, and uh, when I spoke to him about that, it was yes. Okay, so not knowing the users, to me that's kind of hard. Um, but again, my, our concern was just the screen that's up, the trash there isn't so far, but when you look at the other page, where the trash is. Again, it's not the furthest, but tenants are gonna have to walk. So we just wanted to make sure that that was um, clear. They, they would have to increase the frequency as well. If, they, if, if that was not properly sized, they would have to increase the frequency of getting, getting that unloaded. I, I'm not worried about getting unloaded. I'm worried about dumpsters being in the parking lot because people don't wanna walk to it. Oh, okay. Um, and signage, are you going to testify to signage or is that a The architect. The architect. Uh, I could talk about the front sign. We plan on having a monument sign. I, I, I understand our notation on the plan says pylon sign, um, but the intention is to have a monument sign, simple with the address, um, the name of the industrial park, and 
um, each tenant will have their own signage on, on the front of their building. And it's the intent of the applicant for the signage not to require any relief, correct? Correct. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, that's all I have for this witness. Okay. Is there sidewalks in that area for now? For no, there is not. Nothing, right? Nothing. I think their aerial exhibit probably shows it best. The, the, yeah. the closest sidewalk that was actually just recently installed was around the Wawa. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the, right, and the board will, or, you know, Jen typically says, yeah, yeah, yeah. start somewhere, but uh, yeah, it should be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. Right, 100%. Um, you guys are seriously, with the, with the sewer coming, you're betting on that that sewer is coming down 30 foot. We're, the applicant's betting on it, and if not, they'll have to make uh, adjustments to the plan to actually okay, do the extension themselves. Right. Well, I, I believe the plans were approved already. We have a set of the plans, the drawings that we based it off of. It wasn't that I'm, I'm not sure what the litigation was about, but they've already designed that project. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, the building has to cut in half. Right, right, right. We understand. That would be up to the applicant at that point, but yeah. Can you tell us how close existing sewer is to the site? I believe it's approximately uh, 800 to 1,500 feet away. Yeah. No, it's the opposite location. It's it's going east, yeah, going down uh, eastbound. Yes, um, I believe that's Fairfield Road. Yes. There's a there's a pump house proposed with an easement uh, on the neighboring property actually. Yes, yeah. If the sewer was to come, it would probably invite some more uh, businesses yes. to come that way, which I would, I would like to see in our HP1 zone. I'm sure all of us would like to see that. So. Yeah, Mayor elect, we'd actually be a little bit further, uh, being the, further along, being able to opine about the sewage, but unfortunately, when the decision was supposed to be made and scheduled this past summer, there was actually a bomb threat called in at the Freehold Superior Court, so got to punt it. We just haven't been rescheduled yet. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I have one other follow-up. Sure. I know you testified that the stormwater is consistent with uh, the DEP standards and our ordinance, but you also have some off-site stormwater improvements within the DOT right away. Yes, we'll be getting a. Uh, we'll be looking for a permit for that to discharge uh, into the brook. Okay. Now I'll require a discharge sure. permit. Thank you. Uh, anybody else have any questions? Is anybody from the public here, or is it just the team? It's a good game. Just time. for purposes of the record, yeah, I would recommend opening it up to the public for questions. Got it. Just in case any of these witnesses can't be at the next meeting. Sure, I will open up questions now. Okay, I will close that. <laughs> All right, Councilor, any. Final I have remarks. no further uh, questions for this witness, nor do I have any other expert witnesses for tonight. I do apologize in advance. We had some scheduling conflict. No, no, no. Thank so you. So with that being said, if it was okay with the board, if there's no other questions, we would uh, request. Yeah, board. let me just check with the board professionals. Anything else? Yep. You guys good? Good. Okay. So Eileen, I guess, Eileen, I guess we're looking into December. Okay. And what about January? We have no dates for January. We can carry right. you to December 19th for scheduling. Well, purposes. we've, um, we did notice for reorganizing yes, January. Yes, we did. January 2nd is the Yeah, so what we can do is we can schedule you for January 2nd, uh, just as sort of a time that we can then give you an actual hearing date, so then you don't have to re-notice. We'd be carried for scheduling purposes yep. only, no testimony or anything. Great, that's acceptable, yes. We'd like to be carried to the January 2nd hearing date, understanding that notice was satisfied for tonight's hearing. And, council's meeting and we would be carrying it over to January 2nd with no further notice. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. We would also need an extension of time from you as January 2nd. 
Absolutely. I presume that saying it on the record would not be satisfactory. I'd also have to send in a letter or? On the record, it's fine. Okay, great. So we'll extend uh, the, the decision uh, for an extra 60 days from January 2nd. 60 days. Yes. Okay, so then for purposes of the record, uh, case number SP-1127, Diversified Acquisitions, LLC, be carried to the board's January 2nd, 2025. Uh, meeting. It will be a live meeting, 7 o'clock here in the main meeting room. There will be no further notice to property owners. Terrific. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I mean, if my memory serves me correctly, which is not, at the reorg meeting last year, didn't we, we hear applications, right? Didn't a, we a lot of them typically? Were carried with, for scheduling purposes only. Right. But yes, you can hear that. Okay. Reason. I thought we heard one last year. Some, sometimes we're up against the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms okay. Of like uh, time to make a decision. Got it. Okay. Yeah, and uh, well, that's what I want to make clear to counselor. I don't know if he's aware of that. The other thing is, when you do that, you're never exactly sure what the composition of the board is going to be. So not everyone may be eligible to vote right. because you know they weren't here. So it's just you know it. Uh, less unknowns if we just do it for scheduling purposes on the second. Is that unknown? Given those concerns, we would absolutely rather be carried just for scheduling purposes. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Just want to make sure. Okay. Clear. Cool. The second? It's, it's got to be the first. Because when it's last, but then we change it to the second. Are you sure? But right. if there's no mayor, which Well, hold on. Let, well, let's do this then. Let's carry it to the second meeting in December, and December. we'll get this scheduling worked out so that we can. He's not come here with all the witnesses anyway, so he might as well just keep going, right? Yeah. No, he, but he's only no, no, no. Going to scheduling purposes. Scheduling. Yeah. 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 All right, so what's the second meeting in December? December 19th. Okay, so let me just. Yeah. All right, so then. Application SP-1127, Diversified Acquisitions, LLC, be carried to the board's December 19th, 2024 meeting. It's a live meeting beginning here. It may mean we're at town hall at 7 o'clock. Uh, no further notice to property owners. And that will be for scheduling purposes only. Terrific. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate Thank you. It. I'm assuming there's no master plan update. Okay. And Ron, any reason for executive session? No, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, everybody. Do I have a motion to dismiss or dis to end? Thank you, everybody.